I've never flown a C-Ray, period. I've never even seen one. I just decided that it was like, nah, if it checks my boxes, might as well just go buy one. And here comes full throttle. Oh, not too much. So just oh, light work on the pedals. Yep, sorry. There you go. And we got fine. a big rudder back there. Yeah. <laughs> What is up, fellow aviation enthusiasts? It is the day before I head out to pick up a 2013 C-Ray LSX that I have under contract. I've been looking for a C-Ray now for like a year and a half, really any floating flying machine. The C-Ray happens to check a lot of my boxes. I found one last week and I put an offer in on it that the seller accepted, I've got it under contract, and now I've been moving all the logistics around and everything to actually get the purchase done. So a big reason to buy an expensive flying toy is because I live in Michigan. Michigan's the best state in the union, in my opinion, and we have a ton of shoreline and a ton of inland lakes. I prepared a graphic to help explain it all. So we have 3,200 plus miles of shoreline. Depending on which method you use to analyze it, more than Florida and California and everyone else except for Alaska, and that depends if you count the tidal zones and stuff, and someone will argue that all day long. But we have at least 1,600 miles of straight line shoreline, including Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and over 11,000 inland lakes, 11,000. Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, also has 11,000, weirdly enough, but I feel like it should be mentioned. Obviously, you're not gonna be landing a Sea Ray in the middle of Lake Superior unless you're looking to go to Davy Jones Locker, but there's a couple days a year where you have no wind, no waves, and I feel like you can definitely get into some of these islands, Manitou Island, Fox Island, Beaver Island, High Island, Garden Island, Bois Blanc Island, Martin Bay, Whitefish Bay, all these areas that you can't get to any other way unless you have a boat, and then your trailer in your boat, and putting your boat in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot better to fly your boat from here, Grand Rapids, to here, Round Island, drop in the bay, have yourself a ham sandwich with nobody else around. How do you buy an experimental airplane when you can't legally fly it because you don't have a tailwheel rating and it's somewhere else in the country and it hasn't been an annual for a year? So a lot of uh, orange flags there. So the person that I'm purchasing it from is the person that purchased it from the original builder. That person didn't have a ton of detailed info on the plane. They say they all have it in person, but they did publish the logs for me to review and a number of detailed photos. Uh, I was able to find the original builder of the aircraft. I reached out to him too, and he was uh, helpful enough to answer a bunch of questions that I had, which really kind of filled in a bunch of gaps. And then I felt comfortable enough to make an offer on the plane. So in my kit of items to go, first of all, I have my paperwork. I am registering this plane as an LLC, uh, which means I have a letter that instructs the Federal Aviation Administration that my LLC is wholly owned by an American citizen, me, and the LLC itself is an American citizen. I have my articles of incorporation for my LLC, and I'm not gonna show you all these things, but I have my cashier's check here for the seller and the amount that we've agreed to. I have a bill of sale that's been filled out in duplicate and typed uh, that we will sign on the day and a registration form in duplicate for the FAA that'll get sent in once the aircraft deal has been done. I've even made myself some envelopes here so that I can send those registrations in from Minneapolis before we depart. So all that paperwork goes, it's all sorted ahead of time because I don't want to deal with it on the day. We went up to Minnesota to pick up the Sea Ray. We flew up there with myself. Uh, I flew Jim up from Florida to inspect the Sea Ray to do a pre-buy on it. He's a, a Sea Ray expert. I flew up a CFI because I didn't have my tailwheel endorsement sorted out at the time. So I flew Jake from Michigan as well. And then Sam, uh, one of my guys that we work with a lot up there in Minnesota, picked us up and drove us around in his Honda Fit and let us use it for a couple days. And then we had to bring it back. The Sea Ray came from Hector, Minnesota, west of Minneapolis, St. Paul. And it's about 500 miles, 550 miles back to West Michigan where it'll be based here at Sparta, 8 Delta 4. It actually took us a couple days to get back. One, we were hoping that we get the pre-buy done and maybe we could take off at night and that just didn't happen. We had to open the plane up, inspect the boom tube. We're somewhere in rural Minnesota looking for 1 8 inch all aluminum large head rivets. So we had to remove some for the pre-buy inspection and nobody locally has them, but we think we found them at an airport so we're gonna cruise up there and talk to the mechanic and try to buy a few rivets off him. It's kind of a fun little challenge. I think we found him though. And it's, it's also gusting 32 knots, so we can't actually take off. We got plenty of time. Look at those, five dollars. What we searched all over creation for. <laughs> I really wanted a thorough, thorough pre-buy. When I brought my Tiger, I didn't. I had a pre-buy done by just a guy, not a Grumman expert, and it ended up costing me 20 grand within a year. 
and I wanted to avoid that as much as possible with the C-Ray. We also had to do a conditional inspection at the same time, and by the time we were done, it was about five or six o'clock on Wednesday night, and it was just too late for us to leave. Unfortunately, on Thursday, the wind was blowing 30 plus knots, and we had hoped that it would die down and we'd again leave later in the afternoon and at least make it somewhere over here, Wisconsin area. That didn't happen either. Wind never died down. We ended up going to the sports bar, had a really nice patty melt, it was pretty sick, but it didn't get us anywhere closer to home. And thank God we didn't, because if we would have tried to depart in even 25 knot winds, which is what they did slow down to, we would probably be by now for sure. New plane, plane that hadn't flown in a year. Me, an unexperienced pilot, not a good recipe for success. So we kind of uh, scrapped that day. Yeah, it's uh, almost 8 p.m., 7.30. Plane's still there, and we're still getting back into a Sam Sharp's Honda Fit here. Not flying, driving like losers. Yeah, we're probably gonna drive faster than we will fly, though. Yeah, it's a fit. <laughs> uh, it's pretty debatable. And then on Friday, you know, the, the wind smiled on us. We knew that if we left early, that it was gonna be very calm. We got up at the crack of dawn, got out to the field, and we were off the ground by about 7.15 a.m. to start our journey eastward. So how do you, you want, I can run the radios, you fly. Uh, I can do it, but I do it all. I, the, I think I need to help with the most is to make sure we don't loop it. Yeah. I can do pretty much everything else. And then probably some navigation for now. Just yeah, definitely. I didn't bring my iPad thing. And... Yeah. I'll probably do at least one of the takeoffs and landings here. Okay. Just so that way I get a baseline for, as I'm teaching you, yeah. kind of how it. There you go. Engine instruments check, throttle idle. So go back one. There you go. Before takeoff, yeah, brake set, seat belts, car pilot door, we're, we'll keep that a little bit for now. Yep. Flight controls are free and correct. Rudders, free and correct. Altimeters, correct pressure. Uh, fuel selector valve, we don't have one. Yep. Mixture full range, don't have one. Yeah, it's and just it's on. on. Yep. Elevator and aileron trim, I believe we're neutral. I wish we had an indicator for that, but I think we're neutral. Throttle 1800, magnetos check. So 175 max drop, here we go. Latched. The car come a bit. Back voltage. That should probably go away as we speed up. Oh, just taxiing around, but yeah. That's, uh, we're going to take off that way, right? Yep. Uh, oh, whoops. There you go. Okay. So full throttle. So kind of get the throttle just a little bit and get us going forward to make sure the nose, the tailwheel's not, uh... All right, you don't want a nasty surprise when you yeah, yeah. put full power in there. Okay, our volts came back up. Okay, so full throttle, stick forward. Yeah, so just get the stick steering. just a little bit forward. Do you want me to do the first one and kind of talk to it? Or? Yeah, sure. Right, sounds good. My controls? Yep, you have the controls. My controls. All right, so let go of the brake. Give it full throttle. Give it a little bit more back trim. So kind of just get that stick a little bit neutral. Yep, yep. You can feel the tail's already up. Yep. And then you're basically just waiting for it whenever it's ready. Yeah, it still wants to fly off. Yep. yep. And track. you can see it's a weird sound, right? Yeah. Like how high pitch it is. And then positive rate, out of usable gear up. I'm just following you on the controls too. Yep. So that likes to slide back. All right, gears up and locked. Probably still trim forward, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Sorry, yeah, you have the controls. Yep, you're good. Yeah, I'm just I'm, yeah, I want you to feel me on it though. There we go. It does like that throttle likes to work itself back. I don't know if there's a lock or something like that, but I 
Oh, we could pause for a bit, flaps up as well. Alright, so there's a beam. So a beam your departure under the runway, gear down. Yep. There's no gear speed, so. All right, two greens, gears down and lock. And now every time, so power comes back, I usually use about, oh, 4,000-ish, or 3,800-ish. All right, so power, pitch, two green, gears down and lock, yep. flaps. Every time I touch the flap handle, I get the gear, I uh, check the gear. Right, yeah, I just back, double check. Yep. Make it a have it. Select landing. Oh yeah, it oh. does have it. That's kind of cool. Runway. Runway landing. This is a runway okay. landing. This is. I verify my gears down. Yep. And I got mine too. And so on takeoff, we did have have, yeah. well, you know, a charge. Yep. And it is char It is charged here. We're doing 18 amps too, so it's you know. I took this one out a little bit farther. Yeah, but yeah no worries. Hector traffic. Hector traffic. Experiment one of the kilo on uh, left base. I forgot which runway it is. Uh, three zero. One six three zero. Back there. All right. So there's no mixes, no props. Gears down and locked. We can go flaps to. Can you can you get that flap lever? It's a little hard for me. Yeah, one more down. Yep. There we go. Thanks. Is it in lock? Cool. And then approach about sixty sixty five. And of course, we don't have a whole lot of runway, so if it's not looking good, just go around. It's a really, really weird sight picture how low you are. Yeah. So you almost kind of want to work it into what you would... I think you're going to almost feel like you're going to three-point it. Okay. Just because of how low it is and how you're used to sitting so far up, you know? Right. All right, final check. We got two green, gears down Two green, my gears set. down, flaps are set. Add a little bit of power here. I'm just following you through the pedals. Yep. So yeah, it really doesn't like to get much below 60 to 65. Hector traffic, experimental coil, kilos, final three zero. A little bit of power since we're kind of sinking. Yeah, that's six zero. And then get that stick just slightly forward, right? Until that tail settles. And then we can get it Okay. Yeah, I think it's not difficult. All right, get those flaps up real quick. Flaps coming up. And flaps are up and locked. Yep, back down to 20. We want to oh, get back yep. down to 20 for takeoff. Yep. All right, and whenever you're ready, your controls. I have the controls. Your controls. Give you a little bit of back trim there. Yep. And I'll back be falling right along. Okay. We got enough of uh, runway here. Yep. Okay. And here comes full throttle. I think it'd be harder to turn around. Yeah. Okay. There you go, not too much. So just Sorry, light work sir. on the pedals. Yep, sorry. There you go. That's way more aggressive than I'm used to. Yep. And we got fine. a big rudder back there. Yep. <laughs> All right. And there's out of usable. Oh, we're out of usable, that's power, that's up. And gear's coming up. And what I always teach is either look at it, point at it, or touch it. Okay. And then you got two blue, yep, gears and up. Yep, I can verify it's up. And there's brakes on to stop that wheel. Yep. And trim is pretty good right now, and so I do this without the throttle coming back on me. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you've got like a friction lock yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't see one. I'm so used to turning that, you know. All right, and flaps. There's flaps. What do you think? You want to do? You want to you want to do a landing real quick, or? Yeah, let's do one. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, you might be sticking to 500 foot patterns, honestly. Yeah. So there's your departure end of the runway. Yep. Gear can come down. All right. And gear's coming down. And then just keep, like I said, either look at it, hold it, something like that. Yep. 
Gears down. Two greens. I can verify my left is down. Gears my right's down. down. Okay. And here comes our first notch of flaps. It's flaps. It's trim. Also, I'm not used to a stick. Yeah. Especially now with my left hand. What's the runway? Uh, two. Three zero. Three zero. Active damage, uh, Dominant. Three zero. Three zero. Active. Two zero. Three 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 zero. Alright, so you're on a base, right? You can get that trimming just a bit. Yep. And you can get that uh, last notch of flaps in. But before you do that, right? Gears down and lock. Yep. Gears and down and we lock. get the flaps. That's flaps. So every time you touch that flap handle, you're double checking Select the gear. Landing mode. We are runway landing. Gear is down. I verify that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the uh, steering was way more sensitive than I was used to. Yep, it's just pressure yeah, on the yeah. rudders, that's all it is. And I would say about 65. Okay. I'm fine, or you're going to really sink. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. So just light pressure. Yep. That's 65. Remember, you're moving way less weight than you're used to. Yep. And then once about the runway is made, yep, you get that throttle to idle. And then just kind of hold this attitude here. Hold it. And just keep punching yep. jab on those rudders. Yep. Keep that stick coming Back forward. Voltage. Right, because in a two-point, you yep. want to get that stick forward. And then now that that tail's down, you can get the stick all the way back. And let's come to a full stop. Oh, that wasn't the worst. I bounced it. No, but. not at all, yeah. And this gear, it seems like it's pretty susceptible to it. Yep. So. All right. All right. Ready to go again? Let's get those flaps up. All right. Gear is down. Go to flaps one. Voltage. Flaps one. Check voltage. Yep. Trim is good. Hector traffic, still back to the party of runway 30, Hector. Oh, there's Gary. Clear left, clear right. All right, all right. And here comes full throttle. Brakes are off. Light pressure. Heck, voltage. There you go, I'll just give it a little bit of back pressure. She's ready to go. That was better. Yep. <laughs> All right. There's not a usable positive yep. brake. Gear's coming up. And keep your hand on it. Or I kind of want to get my hair yeah, on. Yeah, okay. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Make sure you... The blue. Gear's on the lock. I see both wheels. And let's go. Let's get out of here.